We're marking one year since the signing of the Abraham Accords at the White House lawn. And to discuss everything achieved during this time, we're joined by His Excellency Ilan Shtulman, the Israeli Consul General here in Dubai. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So how would you describe this past year? Mm, challenging, but I think overall very positive, very positive in the end. I mean, if you take into consideration that we had a year of COVID, that uh, people cannot travel again, and uh, you have very big limitations on uh, how many people can go get together, etc. So you take that into account and see what we accomplished. I think that the balance is very positive. Indeed, and you mentioned a figure of uh, half a billion dollars, five hundred million dollars in trade. Which sectors have been leading this trade, and how was this made possible despite COVID? Uh, the the biggest chunk of this is diamonds, actually which is very interesting that, uh, that uh, uh, Dubai is a very, you know, is a big hub of diamonds, DMCC. My friend uh, Ahmad bin Sulaim runs a really, really tight operation there. And uh, he had already a good relation with the Israeli partners. So immediately after the accord, he went and DMCC opened an office uh, in the diamonds exchange in Ramat Gan. So the business is just raising drastically. And this is the main one. But the second one is also software. We have a lot of companies of think tank uh, that are already you know, selling technology here. And actually, many of them are setting up offices here and setting up RD. And uh, that's what me personally believe that that's the best way to do it. Because uh, one thing is to sell products you know, as it is boxed and, or not boxed if it's agriculture. But if you do a joint project, then the, the profit is much bigger for everyone else. Is Dubai what you thought it would be? Mm, I think it's much more than I thought it would be. I mean, in the beginning when we came, I wouldn't hold hands with my wife in the shopping malls because I thought it was, you know, and then I started looking how people dress and, and behave and I said, well, uh, am I in Dubai or am I in New York or anywhere else? Uh, no, we're actually very happy with the life here, with the people here. We've made already friends who are local friends, Emirati friends, and uh, really, really, it's much more than what I imagined. The UAE embassy in Israel was officially opened recently, right before that the Israeli consulate, where we are now, was officially opened here in Dubai, and the Israeli embassy was opened in Abu Dhabi. So what do you think the next diplomatic step is? Well, we hope that uh, all the countries in the GCC will eventually establish uh, formal relations uh, with Israel. And we have embassies uh, all over the GCC, and they will have embassies in Jerusalem, I hope. Uh, this is what we hope for, uh, including in our dreams also have an embassy in Tehran, and uh, have the Iranians have an embassy in Tel Aviv and, and live peacefully. To be pragmatic, I don't think we're going to reach that uh, very soon, especially with Iran, if they have this regime in place. But uh, other GCC countries, I think we're very, very close to that. So the first thing you mentioned is health, and you yourself had a very intimate experience with the healthcare system. Your wife recently gave birth to your daughter. What was that experience like? And of course, a big congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I, actually, I think I got better treatment with the daughter born here than the, with the daughter born in Israel. I mean, we had a wonderful doctor that, uh, you know, we're becoming friends even. And uh, all the staff was really, you know, it's an international, you know, you see people from the Philippines, you see people, doctors from Pakistan, from, uh, but they were very good. And it was a complicated delivery, it was a C-section, and my wife has, you know, all the medical issues, the treatment was very good, people were very nice. We just, you know, we felt very, very uh, well treated in that. So people in the ministry, in my ministry, foreign minister of Israel asked a few months ago, do you want to come back to Israel to deliver? And I said, no, because, you know, we had already been seeing this doctor and Dr. Dima Salem, you know, very nice woman, and, and we said, no, we, we trust her judgment, we trust her medical ability, and actually paid off. I mean, she was a very good one, and uh, so we were happy with this, yes. 
And your daughter is the first uh, Israeli baby officially born in Dubai. So the first yes. Israeli passport holder where it says Dubai, a place of birth. Yeah, this is also another issue that we have to work on because there's no protocol on how to register an Israeli in here. Or, for instance, one of the, when we register a child in, in the Emirates, they ask you your religion. Uh, so I said, we are Jewish. And then the guy looked at me and said, but uh, what do you mean Jewish? I said, yes, you know, we Israeli citizens, we are Jewish. I mean, there are other religions in Israel. We happen to be Jewish. So the guy said, no, no, I can't. You can be either Muslim or Christian. There's no Jewish. Because also there's not many Jewish kids, uh, apparently, that were born here. So I said, okay, so what, what do you want us to do? So I say other. I said, okay, so wait other. So it's not, you know, she's not registered as a Jewish uh, woman, which is fine. But again, this is also when we first came here and the Israelis started coming in the immigration, they would come and get their IDs. You have to write a nationality. They also didn't have in the systems, the Israeli, you know, the guys would start to, what is it that, you know, that doesn't show up in the system because we could not up until then. Now you can. So not to put you on the spot, but can you share a personal highlight, um, a moment where you said, wow, I'm, I'm doing something significant? Well, the, the, the point that I felt, and yesterday actually I was talking that with a group of, uh, you know, with Yuval, my colleague, and, and in uh, Pesach, Passover, when we Jews celebrate, uh, you know, the exit of from Egypt, etc., and there's a whole ceremony. So we decided to do this with uh, another Israeli family. And then a friend, Ali Bayat, you know, just an Emirati friend, said, you know, I'm very curious to know what do you do, what is this? Can I come? And he said, of course, you, you know, you're very welcome. So we did what's called Seder Pesach, you know, the Passover ceremony with an Emirati Muslim and religious. He's quite, he's not, you know, ultra-Orthodox, but he's religious. He doesn't drink, he doesn't eat more. And so we sat down together and not, uh, we didn't break bread because we don't eat bread in the Passover, but uh, we actually sat down and we explained to him, and that's part of our ceremony is to explain what happened, how we came out of Egypt. So we explained to the kids and to Ali Bayat's family as well. And that's, that was nice. That's the first time in my life, I think, that I had a Passover ceremony with Muslim people and friends with me. And that was, that was a moment that I feel really, it, it, it's, it symbolizes what we are doing here. We're actually doing, you know, not just peace between the UAE and Israel. We're actually doing peace between Jews and Muslims and, and, and proving that, that it's okay, that it, you can live together, you can be friends and you can have uh, stuff and, and that's very nice.